everyone, welcome to a reading vlog. We are doing another the plan is no plans kind of reading vlog. There's no theme, no set time frame. Uh, we're just gonna vlog for a little while and see what happens. It is Friday morning. I'm about to start work, but I wanted to just kick off the vlog and say hi uh, and tell you what I'm reading because I'm already uh, a little ways into a couple of books so I'll just tell you what's going on. My main read right now is Fool's Assassin by Robin Hobb. This is the first book in the Fits in the Fool trilogy which is the final trilogy in the realm of the elderlings. I'm getting so close to the end. I finally started this trilogy. I have been meaning to but putting off this trilogy all year um, but I am finally in it and I am making some good progress. I am almost 50% of the way into the book about right here um, and I am liking this so far. The first quarter of the book was really boring but the second quarter <laughs> has gotten much more interesting. Not that there's a lot more like action or like things happening so much. So far it's a very like quiet and in a lot of ways kind of, I don't, I don't know, like kind of domestic story. That's where I'm at with this. Almost halfway through. First quarter kind of meh. Second quarter much more interesting. Um, also we have gotten a different, a second uh, POV in this book. So most of uh, the like Fitz related books have been solely from you know Fitz's perspective but in this one we get a second per uh, perspective which has been interesting. Um, okay then the other book that I am currently reading uh, is I am rereading The Beast Player by Noko Uhashi. Uh, this is a reread. I've, this is another one that I've been like meaning to reread for a while. These are both ones that I brought with me on vacation and I started them while I was on vacation but I didn't get as much reading done as I had meant to. So I'm finishing them up now. I'm about 30% of the way into the audiobook for this uh, and I'm still liking it. The, the thing about this is that I I'm enjoying this book, but I just am like really not in the mood for it. But these are the two, this is just the dust jacket for this also, you could probably tell, but <laughs> these are the two that I'm currently reading at the moment. Um, this weekend, I am hoping to finish uh, Fool's Assassin. I have been making some good progress in it during the week, uh, which is very unusual for me. I don't read a lot during the week usually, but this week I have, you know, once I got into it, I have been actually making some good progress on this. Uh, and I think I definitely could read the second half of this book. If I actually like focus on it, uh, I definitely could read the second half of this this weekend. Um, this, I said, as I said, try and decide if I'm going to be listening to it this weekend or if I want to kind of put it down for a little while and come back to it. Not totally sure yet. Anyways, those are the books that I am reading right now um, and I will talk to you later. So it is around 7 o'clock now, I finished work, uh, so my day is over, my weekend can start. Uh, I haven't read anything more, but I did go to Barnes & Noble uh, during lunch, uh, so I wanted to show you what I got. I went to Barnes & Noble with three books in mind that I was looking for. Um, I got two of them. So the two books that I picked up are both sci-fi. I got A Prayer for the, wait, yes, A Prayer for the Crown Shy by Becky Chambers. This is the second book in the uh, Monk and Robot series of novellas. Um, and then I also picked up 
a half-built garden. This is one that I've been going back and forth about a lot as to like whether I wanted to get it or not, but recently I just decided to go for it. Um, I don't know too much about this. I think it's kind of first contact sci-fi. Uh, I've heard that it is a little psilocybin. What am I saying? Philosophical. And then the third book that I went to look at and decided not to get was Dark Earth by Rebecca Stott, I think is the author's name. Um, it is kind of like a historical fantasy set in uh, early medieval Britain, so kind of thing that appeals to me. I heard about it because I saw that Lucy Holland, who wrote Sister Song, tweeted about Dark Earth. Uh, so I was intrigued, uh, but I wanted to get to see it in person, flip through it a little bit. Uh, and I'm glad that I did because it still sounds interesting to me, but I don't think I really like the writing style. Uh, so I decided not to pick it up. It's one that like I might come back to at some point, or maybe I'll pick it up as an audiobook. So those are the two books that I got at Barnes & Noble today. Uh, and I also impulse bought this little ruler uh, slash stencil. It has these little like bug stencils, which is really what I wanted. Uh, I want to be able to like do these little stencils in my reading journal, which I actually haven't set up my August reading journal yet. So maybe I'll get to use it uh, for that. But yeah, for the rest of this evening, I am uh, probably going to be working on editing a video. Um, I have to finish editing my last vlog, and then I will be reading more of Fool's Assassin. Anyways, I'll talk to you tomorrow. It is now Saturday evening. Uh, this day kind of got away for, from me, but uh, to catch you up on what's been going on, uh, this morning I chatted with my friend Kathleen. Uh, I, what else did I do? 
I did some reading outside, which I'll tell you about in a second. Uh, and I also finished editing and finally posted my summer themed reading vlog, uh, which ended up taking quite a while. I worked on it <laughs> last night and then finished it up today. Uh, so I uh, finally got that posted. Anyways, so that's what I've been up to. But I have done a little bit of reading. I have not been reading Fool's Assassin. I decided to start a different book, uh, which was A Prayer for the Crown Shy. Uh, so I really just decided to pick this up because I got it yesterday and I was excited about it. So I decided to start reading it and it's so short because it's a novella. How long is this? It's under 200 pages. It's like 150 pages. Um, but yeah, I'm about halfway into this now uh, and really enjoying it. It has, it's just like the series, you know, is very like soft and cozy feeling. Um, I guess all the first book in the series is A Psalm for the Wild Built, uh, which in that one we're following Dex, who is a tea monk. Uh, so tea monks, essentially they're like a traveling therapist who like goes from town to town and gives people tea and comfort uh but dex is kind of having like a quarter life crisis and so they decide to uh kind of go off into the wilderness to figure out what to do with their lives and while they're there they encounter a robot named moss cap uh and they have the goal of finding out what do humans need um and so the two of them get to know each other and like learn a little bit more about each other. Anyways, so that was that's kind of the beginning of the first book. Second book is continuing on with that story following T Monk Dex uh, and the robot Moss Cap um, as they are on this journey to find out what do humans need. Um, but yeah, so really enjoying this very just like soft and cozy feeling uh which i'm really liking uh that is my whole update for today uh i am hoping to finish a prayer for the crown shy tonight and then tomorrow's reading can be more focused on um fool's assassin although tomorrow i do have to film which always takes um a chunk of my day i was planning to film today and then when I woke up this morning, I just was like, nope, I am <laughs> too tired. Uh, so I just decided to do it on Sunday. Um, so yeah, tomorrow I have to film, uh, which means I have less reading time, but hopefully I will still be able to make some time to get a good amount of full assassin red. Anyways, that's it for now. Talk to you later. now Sunday evening. Once again, this day kind of got away from me, but to catch you up on what's been going on, um, this morning I chatted with my friend Abby, which was great. Um, after that, what did I do? I did some reading that I will tell you about in a second. Uh, I took a nap in the, in the middle of the day, then I woke up, filmed some videos. Oh, and I also started crocheting something. I started crocheting. I got this far. I am making a little granny square baby blanket uh, because someone that I actually am not 100% sure how we're related. I think maybe they're like my second cousin or something. She had a baby recently so I'm making a little baby blanket uh, and I recently got this really cute yarn that so this is like it's purple and it has these little like flecks that are like white pink and yellow. I also have yarn that matches this that is white with little flecks in it. Um, I've made baby blankets before a long time ago and I've done this kind of style where it's just kind of like one giant granny square and then I did like a little scalloped edge around the edges uh, which looked really cute so I'm trying to recreate that but it's been a very long time <laughs> since I crocheted anything let alone since I've made a baby blanket so 
we're gonna see how this goes <laughs> and see if it turns out well or not uh, but I started it at least so there's that uh, and it'll be a good project to work on while I like listen to audiobooks and stuff like that uh, crocheting is an excellent uh, activity for audiobook listening speaking of which I can give you an update on my audiobook uh, so I listened to more of the beast player uh, so I am now 40% of the way into it. I think last time I mentioned it to you, I was saying that I was like, I'm not sure if I really want to continue this reread or not, because I don't know if I'm in the mood for it. Uh, but now that I'm at like the 40% mark, I am enjoying my reread a lot more, uh, and I feel like I'm back into the story, so I'm definitely going to continue on with it. Um, it is kind of interesting to me that like, at like this time around, I feel like I'm enjoying different parts of the story than I was before, um, which I don't know, actually, I don't think I explained what the book is about. So in The Beast Player, we're following our main character, uh, Ellen, who is this young girl that her mother uh, takes care of, uh, is like an animal caretaker for the Toda, which are essentially like sea serpents, kind of, um, which are kept by the royal family. Some of the Tota die mysteriously. Her mother is uh, blamed for it and and killed, uh, but in her last moments in order to save her daughter, the mother like somehow manages to save Ellen and sort of like sends her away. Uh, Ellen is then found by uh, this old man who is a beekeeper, he takes her in uh, and teaches her about beekeeping. Uh, and then from there she discovers that she also has a real passion for uh, learning about and caring for various animals and later on in the story she goes on to like learn about animal caretaking in a more formal setting and I don't want to get too much into <laughs> what happens in the story. Um, but the first time I read uh, the Beast player, my favorite part of the story was the first third-ish of the book when she was living with uh, this old man and learning about beekeeping. It was very like idyllic. She was like running through the meadows, watching bees and learning about animals. This time around, I felt less engaged in that first third, which I think is why I was kind of like, I don't know if I really want to reread this. Uh, and now I, but now I'm at the point where she's kind of at this more like, this place to learn more formally about uh, animal caretaking and it's sort of moving the plot along a little bit more and I'm feeling more engaged in the story. So this time around I'm a little more interested I guess in the plot aspects of the story. Uh, so which is one of the things I always think is interesting about rereading is that each time you reread like sometimes there are different aspects of the story or the book that are you know interesting or engaging. So this time around a little bit different, but I am enjoying it. I'm about 40% of the way in. Next, uh, next update is that I finished A Prayer for the Crown Chai by Becky Chambers, which uh, I really enjoyed. I think I liked this one better than the first book in the series. Um, I think in the last clip I told you about what the, what like the premise of the story is. So, in this we're just continuing to follow Dex and Mosscap as they are traveling together. Uh, Becky Chambers always kind of weaves in some like philosophical elements, some of these uh, conversations between uh, the two main characters about life and society and the world, you know, what is like, you know, personhood. That's an element of her books that I always really enjoy uh, and yeah so I really liked that about this. I think one of the things I especially liked about this one is that now that you know Dex and Mosscap know each other better we get to see a little bit more of their dynamic and their relationship as they're traveling. This is just very like soft and wholesome. I enjoyed it a lot uh, and I gave this one four stars. So those are, so that's the last thing that I finished reading, still reading uh, The Beast Player, and I have not made progress on Fool's Assassin yet. Uh, so the new plan 
is finish this before next weekend so I can start a different book next weekend. Uh, but we'll see how that goes, you know? My reading is always very unpredictable. Anyway, that's my update for now. I'll talk to you later. Hello, it is Wednesday evening. Thought I'd give you a little midweek update. Uh, I finished work for the day, uh, actually a while ago. I feel like I lost track of the day, but apparently that is just consistent for the last week or so. But what what's going on uh, with reading? I have been slowly but surely making my way through The Beast Player, that's what this is, uh, but I am listening to the audiobook, I am listening to it pretty slowly um, because I mostly have just been listening to it in the morning when I am like getting ready and doing my makeup and that doesn't take that long so I am making progress but very slow progress in my reread of The Beast Player. Um, but I have made some progress in uh, Fool's Assassin. So I think the last time I talked to you I was like maybe 40-45% of the way in. I think I am more like 60-65% of the way in now. Um, and I am enjoying this third quarter even more. I'm, apparently I'm mentally splitting the book into quarters. Uh, first quarter, kind of meh. Second quarter, more interesting. Third quarter, I'm really enjoying it now, I think. I like the second perspective that we are getting in this. I think it, I think they're an interesting character. I also actually really like being able to see Fitz's character from the outside uh, because honestly being inside his head is kind of frustrating. Uh, so it's very interesting to see him through someone else's eyes. And there was even a scene uh, earlier in the book where Fitz was grieving something and like we've seen Fitz grieve so many times because like so many bad things have happened, so many people have died, like all the time. Very common occurrence. Uh, I feel like this may have been the most emotional time, for me at least, when Fitz was grieving something. Um, and it was not even because of what he was grieving. It was because that scene was told from the outside. It was told from the new point of view. Normally I would assume that like being in the mind of the character as they are grieving would be like the more sad experience and yet somehow seeing him through this other character's eyes and seeing his grief from the outside made it I think much more emotionally impactful to me for some reason. Uh, maybe just because I don't I don't love being in Fitz's head. So liking this new perspective, uh, not that much plot wise is happening. Like it's really just about the characters, uh, which I am very much enjoying because if I've said it once, I've said it a million times. <laughs> Uh, the thing that I like most about Robin Hobb's books is I like her writing, I like the world, and I like the characters. I think her characters are very interesting. Um, I don't really like her plots that much. That is the place where we run into trouble and I get annoyed with the way that she plots her stories. But this one has very little plot. It's no plot, just vibes. It's all about the characters and like the little dramas of their life. There's like a background plot to it um, where it's like maybe there's an assassin after somebody. We don't really know, but it's like very much in the background. And this is really just about like the dramas of their lives for the most part. Uh, and I'm having a great time. The only thing I'm kind of like not liking, I guess, I don't know if it even, I'm just confused, I guess, is like, I am pretty far into this book now. Uh, and I, we have yet to see The Fool. And yet this is called The Fits and the Fool Trilogy. The book is called Fool's Assassin. And yet, no fool. So like, You've set up my expectations and they're not being met. I was expecting the fool to show up at some point. Uh, I don't know if he's even gonna show up at all in this book. Uh, but that's where I'm at with this. Enjoying this more than I was expecting to. Uh, and I do think that I'll be able to finish it by the end of the week uh, because I am enjoying it. So I'm like 
reading it a little more quickly now. Uh, but that's my midweek check-in. I'll talk to you later. All right, so it is Friday evening now. Uh, so I wanted to, before we get into the weekend, I want to give you a little reading update. Uh, still slowly but surely making my way through the Beast Player. I think I'm about 50% of the way into this now. Um, hopefully I'll get a little bit more done over the weekend. Uh, I have been crocheting some more. Uh, so I've made some progress on that at least. This is where I'm at with my baby blanket. Still has some way to go, but looking pretty good. I think I am gonna have to get some more yarn though. I underestimated how much I was going to need and I'm not like following a pattern or anything. Uh, I'm just kind of winging it. So, you know, hope for the best. That is generally my approach to crocheting. Uh, so I think I'm gonna actually need some more yarn for it. Uh, but in terms of Fool's Assassin, I'm about 85% of the way into this, I think. Uh, I only have like 100 pages left, so I am going to try and finish this tonight. There's a curl doing a weird thing right there. Tomorrow I do have plans to like actually leave my house, which is incredible. Uh, I'm gonna go see my friend Kathleen, so that will be really fun. Um, and then hopefully when I get back, I will be able to start a new book and get some reading done. Uh, but yeah, just wanted to do a quick little check-in at the end of the week before we get into the weekend. And I will talk to you tomorrow. It is Saturday evening now. Um, most of my day today has actually been like out and about. I left my house for once. Uh, I uh, was hanging out with my friend Kathleen. Uh, we happened to cross a little like local street fair that was going on so that was fun to see. Um, and it was just a beautiful day outside today so it's been a very nice day. Uh, I didn't get a lot of uh, footage. I forgot to vlog anything other than I got a little I think I got a clip or two of uh the street fair so hopefully that was <laughs> you saw that right before this clip uh to prove that I actually left my house but I wanted to tell you that I did finish Fool's Assassin um and I really enjoyed this one I mean my thoughts overall haven't changed that much I love it that there was very little plot to this. I really like the addition of this new perspective because honestly, like I've never been that into Fitz as a character. Uh, and in general with Hobbes books, like I find her characters to be very interesting and I like her character work, but I don't often care about them that much. Uh, but I like this new perspective a lot and I'm actually much more interested in this perspective and I feel like I care about that character more. Uh, so those are all great things. I actually saw somebody else in a review on Goodreads describe this as a 600 page prologue to the rest of the series, uh, which obviously I haven't read the rest of the series, but I feel like that is a very apt description of what this is. Um, and so like towards the end when it's actually starting to like bring things together and set up where the plot for the rest of the series is actually going, I was just like, no, I don't want things to happen. <laughs> You know, I just want this to continue being like a completely plotless book. <laughs> We're just following these characters around their lives. Um, so that's just, you know, not a fault of the book. Uh, that's just a me thing. That that was only the last like little chunk of the book. For the most part, I really enjoyed it. I gave this four stars. So now I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to be reading next. Um, I have two options. One is to read Fool's Quest, uh, which is the second book, and just go straight into this. I don't often read Hobbes books back to back, partially just because they tend to be kind of exhausting. My only concern is that I might kind of burn myself out on her books just because they can be kind of intense and they're long and I don't usually read them back to back. And also like 
I'm going into the second book with an open mind, but I am expecting that I probably won't enjoy it as much as the first because it is going to actually have more of a plot, I'm assuming, now that the uh, the very long prologue is over. Uh, so that's one option. The other option is Hunted by Megan Spooner, which is a uh, YA fantasy uh, Beauty and the Beast retelling. It's much shorter, it's like 350 pages, uh, and so this could be a shorter, quicker read that might be a nice palette cleanser between books. So those are my two options. I haven't quite decided yet which one I'm going to go with. Um, I am going to try and get a little bit of reading done this evening, and then I'm thinking that tomorrow, Sunday, I'm going to really like dedicate my day to reading because I don't really have any other plans tomorrow. Uh, so it's going to be a big reading day. Uh, but yeah, so I'm gonna have to decide which one of these to go with tonight and I will let you know tomorrow what I chose to do. See ya. Sunday afternoon now and I have spent a lot of today reading so I actually have made some progress which I'm very excited about. Uh, first let's chat about The Beast Player. So this is the audiobook that I'm listening to uh, and I have been making some good progress in this today. Um, I am now at about 75% of the way into this so I am about here. I've read about this much. Um, and what do I have to say about this? Uh, for one thing, I think I'm enjoying this more on reread, which is always great when you can like a book more the second time you read it. The first time I read this, I really enjoyed the first half. I kind of didn't love the second half as much, um, but that's kind of one of the reasons why I wanted to reread it was because some in, in the time between now and when I first read it, I found out that apparently this is actually like this was originally written as two books that were then put together into one book, which kind of explains why the second half felt different to me from the first half of the book. That was one of the reasons I wanted to reread this was just because I felt like knowing that they were originally uh, two books kind of helped my own just like mindset as to like my expectations while reading this. And I think that that has uh, influenced how I feel about the book uh, because I just kind of knew like, okay, this is gonna like take a bit of a different turn than what I was thinking the story was going to be about in the first half. Now that I have read this book and I know that it's like two book, two like parts to this story. Anyway, I'm enjoying this. Uh, I don't really know, uh, how I'm supposed to pronounce the main character's name because I have been calling her Ellen because in the book the way her name is spelled is E-L-I-N. Um, however, in the audiobook it sounds like they're pronouncing it like Edding. Uh, and so I just, maybe I just don't understand how to pronounce it correctly. I don't know if that has anything to do with the translation because this is translated from Japanese. So I'm not quite sure if I should be calling the main character Ellen or Edding. But I am hoping that I will be able to finish this today. I have, um, I think I have about like three hours and 20 minutes left in my audiobook, uh, which I should be able to accomplish if I like, you know, actually sit down and like really listen to it, especially since I am listening to it at 1.75 speed so it'll go a little bit faster than that also. Um, then I did start a new book. I started reading Hunted by Megan Spooner. I did actually read the first chapter last night of Fool's Quest and decided not to go that route at this time uh, because I, I just started reading it and I was like oh yeah I think that as much as I did enjoy the first book and I want to continue on with it obviously I really feel like if I dove straight into another Hob book, it, I would just get kind of burned out on her books. Uh, so I might even like come back to it 
this month like I might start it in like a week or something but I think that I should read something in between um just to like give myself a little like a little rest in between hob books uh so started hunted uh so this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling so far uh we are following a main character Yeva who has two sisters um her father uh, used to be a hunter and taught her how to hunt and she loves like being out in the forest and hunting uh, but then he uh, you know became a merchant and they have kind of moved up within society. At the very beginning we find out that her father has uh, made some risky business decisions uh, and pretty much has lost everything uh, which forces them to sell off all of their belongings to pay off debts um, and to move out of the city and out to this old hunting lodge where they used to live when their father was a hunter. So they essentially are going back to uh, he is becoming a hunter again. They're living in their old hunting lodge uh, and I guess he's gonna try to build his way back up uh, to like you know a higher station in society again. That's pretty much what's happened so far in the first like three chapters it's the first like 60 ish pages uh we do also get these little entries that are like uh that are i guess from the beast's perspective that seem like maybe they're journal entries of some point of some kind they're only ever like a couple paragraphs maybe a page or two they're, they're pretty brief um but just kind of I guess introducing the beast's perspective uh but we haven't really like encountered the beast yet it hasn't really gotten to the beauty and the beast part of the story yet but I am liking this um I'm not like super drawn into it just yet but I am enjoying it and intrigued enough that I want to continue on with it so most of my attention today has been on the Beast Player and probably will continue to be because this is the one that I uh, want to try and finish today. But I think I'm going to try and make a little bit of progress on this. I'm not planning to get too far into it, but I, I want to like get a little ways in, a little further into it. Uh, I'd love to get at least like 100 pages in, maybe 150 pages since I'm already like 60 pages into this. But that's where I am right now. Uh, I am going to be listening to the beast player uh, and working on my uh, crocheting project. So it is about 10 p.m. now and I need to go to sleep but I wanted to wrap this up real quick. Uh, so I finished The Beast Player which I'm very excited. That is the third book that I have completed in this vlog. Um, I don't think I have a lot of additional thoughts to it. I enjoyed this more rereading it than the first time that I read this. I think I gave this three stars the first time I read it, I'm giving it 3.5 stars now. So not quite so much that I would like bump it up to four stars. I did round up on Goodreads, but my like actual rating, 3.5. So like a solid read. And I have also made a little bit of progress in Hunted. I am a little over 100 pages. Yeah, I'm like 115 pages into this now which is like the first five or six chapters I think. Um, I'm at the point where Beauty has actually encountered the beast yet. I don't know if she totally knows who he like that he is the beast just yet uh, because her father disappeared. So what's happened is her father disappeared while he was out hunting for this beast. She goes out to find him. She uh, encounters the beast like gets captured and wakes up in like a cave 
in, a, in like a cage in a cave. So far it's been a very quick read, which is good. I just, I'm not like that into it uh, at the moment. So, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going, but I'm not, I'm not really invested at this point. And so like the next few chapters will kind of determine whether I finish this or whether I'm going to DNF it. Like I, I don't dislike it. It's not like it would be a DNF where I go like, oh, this is the worst. I can't finish this. More just like, it's fine, but is it worth my time? That's kind of what I'm trying to decide. Anyways, that's where I am uh, with Hunted. But uh, just to wrap things up for this vlog, I finished three books, uh, which is very exciting uh, to me at least, that I read uh, A Prayer for the Crown Shy by Becky Chambers, uh, which I really enjoyed. Uh, then I also finished Fool's Assassin by Robin Hobb, which was uh, surprisingly enjoyed, uh, and then finished my uh, reread of The Beast Player, which I liked even better the second time. So overall, so far, like, August reading has been going pretty well. Um, and I, you know, it's about mid-month now, so I've finished three books in the first half of the month. Hopefully I can keep my momentum going uh, and finish a few more books in the second half of the month. Um, but anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this vlog. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, bye!